what kind of talent is required to work on a game like Warshmallows? It's, it's more about the soft skills and the power skills of the people more than on their hard skills. Okay. Let me explain. You can be an amazing designer, but you draw for a character designer. But if you don't get the spirit of what we want to put in the game, you cannot be in this type of project. And you can be an average de character designer, but if you feel the thing, if you really get into the spirit of what we want to put in the game, you will be the best game de character designer for this game. And something else also, perhaps people they don't know, they think that in video games, you are only or a developer or a, or a graphic designer. This is only 30% of the workforce. We need marketing, community managers, lawyers, uh, uh, accountability, yeah. uh, finance, managers, everything. I mean, events, even in the light, electricity, etc. All those type of people can be in the video game industry. So, I mean, today, anyone, and definitely anyone, can work in an organization making games. Of course, the developers will be in the front line with the game, but as soon as the game is over, who is in the front line? It's the marketers, uh, the, the sales people, the, the finance people, the marketing people, etc. So, uh, uh, we need talents from, from, from everywhere. Uh, uh, for something perhaps people that they don't know, Candy Crush, everybody knows Candy Crush, right? Candy Crush was created by psychologists. It's not game designers, it's not game developers, it's not artists. They were a bunch of psychologists who created Candy Crush. So even doctors at that time can be game designers and game creators. Yeah. And what is your take on equality and diversity, you know, in the workforce and with talent in getting and uh, getting females also working in the in the industry? Um, your experience there and your insights, because I know, you know, people from your team. Who, who, you know, and, and uh, how do you feel about that? We share, again, it's about values yeah. that can be shared with people. So, and there is a bunch of people who can share a lot of different values. In our case, finding the right persons is definitely we start by having like a talk like this. Yeah. Who are you? What do you think about life, about this industry, about this idea? And I pitch them the game and the vision of the company like I'm pitching a VC or I am pitching any representative because they need to believe in the mission. If they don't believe in the mission, they're just going to be employees. But this is not what we are searching for. We are searching for real pe people. So the team, and, and this is something that you've seen on, on, on my co-founder a little bit late, that they're not sleeping. Not because I am a, a bully, uh, boss telling them to not to sleep because they care about the product because they wake up at 4 a.m. and saying hey, I have this idea and if I do this and imagine if the players so they care about the product they care about the community they care about the players and this is how you can you can drive people to, to, to push the limits and do what they want to do what would be your message to young Maltese people who are studying video game you know we've got the Institute of Digital Games at the University of Malta MCAS doing doing their video game programs there are also private institutions um, today doing doing you know degrees in video games what would be your message there and if we had to give them any any uh, any insights basically video game is the most complex piece of software that you can develop not because there is art and music etc because People will judge it, not because it is working. So if you develop an app today, for example, to order food, just click on a button, food will come, you'll be happy because it's IT working. But in a, in a game itself, it, it is working, <laughs> it should work. But people will judge it on emotions that will bring to them. How do they feel when they use that game? This is what people are searching with game. So it's not anymore a software. It's a cultural piece. For software, you expect it to work. It is working. You just, you want Nobody it to work. says, hey, look, Mario is jumping, so oh, good, it's working, so it's a nice game. It's not the case at all. It is working, it should work, and it should work perfectly for that people. It's forget. expected immediately. For people forget that it's a software, and they start getting into it directly. And this, is, this can happen only with, not only with your hard skills developing the game, 
like coding. It's with everything that is around. So general culture, you need to read books to discover things, go to museums, listen to music, internet, discover. I mean, you have YouTube, you have Wikipedia, we have all those things. So there is inspiration in everything. This is what people are searching for in a game. It's not only something that works. Of course, the basics is the basics. You need to know how to code the game. But this is only this. This is the basics of the pyramid. But then if you want to build something amazing, at that time, it's more about everything that is around. The, the emotions that are coming from, from, from the video game. Psychology. Go, go. You do a game, you don't do it for yourself. You do it for people. Of course, if you want to be serious about this. Yeah. And this is why I told you, we started doing this two weeks after the first uh, prototype. We went out and we said, people, play and tell us. Is this worth something? Shall we continue? How do you see it? Etc. Etc. And you start building. And you've seen it. We, 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 well, I remember we're exhibiting fact, it when together. You it, when <laughs> we had organized, when we had organized PlayCon yeah. in Malta, right? And uh, we had a little stand, um, and you know we had um, a number of people coming to try the game, and and it was incredible seeing you know people getting hooked immediately, and they were talking about it. You know, you feel that good vibe about it. And, and but I, we actually saw it happening. You know, but was, you remember really also, as soon as they finished playing, we took them, we put them in front of some kind of form, yeah. and asking them questions. And like, guys, don't tell us that what you, you guys like it, but what you don't like. What are you expecting from a game like this? So this that, that was super. It's part of our culture. It's very important for for me to say this again and again because without this, we will go uh, anywhere. And that feedback was ultimately used. In the product of in, in the final product which we're seeing right now right half of the game was ideas coming from the crowd <laughs> i'm honest about this yeah and today if you go to our discord server about marshmallows you will see like there is a list of people putting even art starting drawing new characters okay we want to see a rasta marshmallow and we <laughs> want it like this <laughs> and yeah. the guy started like drawing a marshmallow we want to see it like this say so, okay we will give it to but our eye director marshmallow who's Lovely and cuddly, also, right? Also, and, it and is, a bit it is. kind of mischievous. Nearly, they, you know, their character <laughs> comes out, yeah. right? It's like the character comes it's out. It's not only the characters, by the way. It's also the maps. So, yes. if you remember, we, 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 so we come from Tunis. It's my origins, but now I'm in Malta. So, and 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 we have people with us from South America, but also we're connected to France, to any other country. So, what it's multicultural. It's multicultural. We, we have we have people on on five different countries, working like daily on the project. I'm not talking about all the others who just come in and get, get out, etc. So uh, uh, we did maps representing those countries. Yeah. And, and, and let's be honest here. How many times Malta was represented in a video game? It's great I to know, see Malta there, I know. <laughs> I know that the movie... It's a proud moment for us. It's amazing. I know that in movies it's, it's, it's good yes. and in series, but now we are talking video games. Yeah. I also know that uh, South, uh, Latin America, I know also that uh, uh, North Africa, even the South of France, never been really represented in a very premium way in, in, a, in, a, in a video game. And this is what we wanted to do actually, to, to say thank you, but also to, to bring something new, something fresh. And, and this is bringing a lot of, a lot of support from, from the country. So the Maltese gamers are actually super proud and happy to see that there is a map called Valletta. Well, Valletta, <laughs> that's it, that's it, Valletta. <laughs> sort of now, where do you go? This, is, this isn't the end of the journey, but the journey is still beginning, right? It's starting right now. So now we showed the people that technically and, and artistically and, and the vision about the product can happen because everything was what well, the pitch was a prototype. Now it is here. The product version 1.0 is here. We are planning to go to version 5, okay. which means three to four years iteration over the over the product, going on console, going on, on mobile. So to, to summarize, to, to not make it very, uh, very complicated. So the first thing we want again to be cross platform. So people will be able to play at home, and then if they go out, they can take their, their phone. The, the, you can play marshmallows five minutes, and you will still be happy. You can play marshmallows in hours, and you also still can be happy. So the game was designed in, in that way. So very short sessions, but repetitive, repetitive. 
so this is the first thing, so cross-platform. The second one is the competitive aspect. And we like to say that we definitely have a casual eSport content. So again, people, like normal people, if I, if I may say that, can like pretend being in a competition of, 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 for a video game. And we are starting right now. So at the end of the month, the first official tournament for the Warshmallows is going to be made. So you play the game, there is a ladder into the game. So to, to be in the ladder, uh, you need to win donuts in, in, in the game. Uh, so we take the first 100 and then we organize a tournament with them. And the winner actually is going to win the first, so a Nintendo Switch plus the first uh, edition of the Warshmallows on Switch and a golden donut. So a real donut, but in, in gold. Yeah. And, and this is part, and, and, and with a number, etc. So this will be like some kind of yeah. collective, collectible, uh, collectible stuff. And also, Warshmallows is not about just fighting, we have a story about the Warshmallows. Yeah. So that person is going to be told the real story of the Warshmallows, and he will be the guardian of the secret of the Warshmallows with us. Exciting stuff. <laughs> wow. <laughs> And finally, uh, Walid, your plans for Malta? Mm -hmm. uh, also a very good question and very challenging one because of everything that is happening. So we were supposed to start operations here in March 2020. So and, and March 2020, something else came. So we, we had to uh, put everybody at home and even people who were supposed to join us here or we go were going to hire people from here. So you followed yeah. the, the full journey, even in the finance part. And we are very transparent about a lot of things. We were supposed to raise funds in, in April 2020 and this happened only in November. So we had to survive, literally survive six months to, to reach uh, this point. Uh, so now, we are, we are in a position of uh, not wait and see, but let's see what is happening in the next week with the sales of the project, mm -hmm. first of all, of course. It's, it's still a business, by the way. Yeah. It's a business, it's not, the whole amusement and cultural aspect and creativity is, is amazing because this is what is driving yeah. us. But at the end of the day, it's a business and, and it it's costs, you need to costs make money. and it costs a lot of money making a game. It's very expensive to do it and to maintain it. So now Malta, in, in uh, let's say the plan A, okay? The game starts to, to sell well. So we, of course, we were going to build um, a team here, bring some people that are working with us already, but also we want to have locals from, from Malta working with us on many aspects, not only in development again. So 30% of the workforce is development, the other is going to be marketing, accountability, law lawyers, etc., etc. It's, it's very important for us. Second thing is we want to make it, of course, it's a, our HQ today is here, but also we want to make our base camp for the eSport. The Maltese ecosystem, of course, it, it's, the, it's a small like in comparison to the Chinese uh, one. But what I like here actually is you can find all the value chain, actually. Mm -hmm. from training to studios to events to streamers to media to, to institutions uh, like the one that you, you are representing. And we've been actually also lucky, perhaps I haven't said this uh, before, but uh, having the support of Malta Enterprise was mm -hmm. super valuable for us yes. uh, in terms of uh, help through the, the process. Malta, we were extremely, extremely closely together, right? So that's the whole idea. And, and, and that's actually, we'll, take us back to the first encounter that you had, yeah. which is Anthony from Malta Enterprise, you from Gaming Malta, and ha having this feeling of ecosystem working together. And that was uh, super, a nice catch for us. Very good. Marshmallows, elevator pitch. Marshmallows, the first shooter that you get happy when somebody shoots you. The importance of the ecosystem. Building together. And Malta? Pastizzi. Ha 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 ha